Hey, do you wonder how you can merge two types into one? Let me show you using TypeScript's union type. What is a union type? A union type is created when you unite different types into one. This gives your user the flexibility to choose between types for an input value. To demonstrate the creation of a union type, I built this sum function here that accepts plain strings. Strings are primitives and I now want to give my user the option to add another primitive, for example a real number, like the 2000 here. As we can see here, numbers are not assignable to strings, so I need to extend my input types. I can do that by using the pipe and then writing another input type, for example the type of number. Now my user can choose between strings or numbers. There is also a mathematical representation to it, so if we check the Venn diagram article on Wikipedia, then we can see that the union is defined by the combination of two sets and we can think of it um, like the set of all strings. Yeah, that can be our set A and set B is then the set of all numbers. And this way we unite strings and numbers. TypeScript also allows us to create bigger unions. So instead of two, we can also have three types or four. And uh, I'm just choosing here Boolean so that you get an idea of how it will look like if we add a third one. To make a union more obvious, we can put it in parentheses. So I'm doing that here. And this is then like our union type. We can also make it even more visible by creating a type alias for it. So I will just name it sum input because uh, it represents the input for our sum function. And I can then assign the union. Let me also quickly remove the boolean here because it makes no sense here as a sum input. And once removed, we will also make a short run here of the script to see if it really works. And yep, all good. The big benefit of creating a type alias is that we can reuse it. So instead of redeclaring our union, we can just insert here the sum input type and also use it for A. Next, I want to show you some common mistakes. So if we hover over the type here, sum input, then we see that it is string or number. And let me quickly remove the parentheses. Now we can make one of the most common mistakes, which is uh, trying to use an array of a union type. And most people just put an array here, but now we see that it is a string or an array of numbers. And that's not what we want. What we want instead is really like an array of a union type. So that's why we need to first put the parentheses and then the array brackets. Now we can enter array values. So 1000 here is an array and the 2000 also within an array. Let me just rerun the program to see if we get the 3000. And yes, it works. Union types also work great in index signatures of objects. I have this object Benny here and Benny is of type person and the person has an age and a name. Let's say I want to add a new property, for example city, and I will put as value Berlin, then city is not allowed because a person doesn't have a city. So I would have to add then city as a property of type person. And when I do that, then I also have to define the type that a city can have. But let's say I want to allow any type yeah, I want to say any type but any key, then I can put here any key as an index signature and the key needs to be of type string. And then I can define the value types. And value type can be, for example, string to satisfy the city, but it won't work then for the age because age needs to be of type number. So we can also put then a union here and the union can be a string or a number. So we unite strings and numbers which will give us the opportunity now to remove the other properties here because they are all represented in any key. The property ID also fulfills the requirements of any key as it is a string and 1337 fulfills the requirement of our union type which says that the value needs to be a string or a number. The next thing I want to show you are discriminated unions. So let's go back to our initial person. And our initial person just had two properties. If you remember, we had the age property of type number, and then we had the name property of type string. 
For the demo, we need a second type. I will create, let's say a dog, and the dog will have the same properties as the person. So we will also give the dog an age and we will give the dog a name. When you've played with a dog, you know that the dog can also bark. So let's give the dog a bark function. The function here just uh, will be an empty function that returns nothing. So void will be the return type. And for a person, I will give something similar, but the person cannot bark, the person will shout. So shout is also here just a placeholder for a function. Now we have two types that declare different functionality and we will add a function where we will let them make noise. So the function will be named make noise and the function gets a dog or a person. So a dog or person. And then we will use a union. So the union will be dog or person. The function will return void. So nothing, nothing is returned here. And now comes the big trick of discriminating these unions. We want to do that with a switch. So preferably we can switch on a property to distinguish between a dog or a person. For doing this, we need a pattern that is called discriminated unions and it relies on a property that both types have. So the dog and the person, they need to share one property that distinguishes them. I will name this property type, but you can name it whatever you like. So type will be now a fixed string for me. I will call it person and I then need to give that property also to the dog. So the dog will also get a type here and the type will be a different string, which is dog. Using this type property now, we'll leverage the power of TypeScript because TypeScript can distinguish based on this type property. When we open up here the switch block, then we will see that by creating a case, Let's check what the case can be. So there are two cases, dog and person. If we select the dog string here, then we will see in a bit that the auto completion will become very, very smart. As we see here, we now can select the bark method. Let's do it. Yeah, we want to hear our dog barking. And then we will open up a second case. And the case that is left here for us is the one that declares the person. And with the person, we can do the same trick. Yeah, we can now select dog or person from the auto completion and TypeScript will show us the shout method. Let's finish our example by putting a break here and let's quickly revisit what happened. So there's bark and there's shout. Depending on the type, so type person or type dog, TypeScript then knows what to use when we give it a switch block. Last but not least, I want to show you that union types also work well with interfaces. So let's turn the type of doc into an interface by using the interface keyword. We then also have to remove the eagle sign and then we have an interface. We can do the same for the person. And what we will see now is just fine. There is no problem here in the code. Everything will compile and union types will also work with interfaces.